Good morning, Paul. It's Tuesday, the 21st of March. Here's the heads of brief for today. For the Southeast Asia production, we covered 17 issues. In North Asia, we covered three. And for the Australasia and Pacific Islands, we covered four issues. In South Asia, we covered 18 issues, plus the major issues in the Europe, Middle East, and Africa regions. Okay, excellent. Go ahead, please. In Indonesia, Paul, workers will continue protests against the government decree on the omnibus job creation law and other legislations including one that allows employers to cut wages. They'll be protesting in Jakarta and various cities across Indonesia today. And they've said they'll protest in the coming weeks also. However, the protests have not been that large. All right, guys, thank you. In the Philippines, the Philippines and the US are set to announce uh, the locations of four military bases that the US forces will have access to under the Enhanced Defense Cooperation Agreement. Uh, according to reports, two of the bases may be located in Cagayan province, which is less than 400 kilometers away from Taiwan. Okay, another way to put that is it's a, it's a hell of a sail over to Taiwan, but uh, I guess for the size of the fleet, it's going to be strategically very handy. Just flipping back to Indonesia, we're keeping clients abreast of where the protests are going to be, particularly in Jakarta. Yes, Paul, we've uh, sent that out already. All right, thank you. Yeah. In Thailand, Paul, uh, the Palang Prachirat Party and the United Thai Nation Parties are set to unveil their candidates for the members of parliament. The United Thai Nation Party will field 400 candidates across Thailand. Uh, the election commission will announce the election date this week. It's either going to be May 7th or May 14th. Okay going to be a fascinating time to see how that evolves and how Proyot's strategic management combined with his profile and the rift between Proyot and the deputy Prawit and their relevant um, positions in the in the two those two parties holds out and where Thailand goes come May it's fascinating thank you Great. Moving over to South Asia, in Nepal, Prime Minister Pushpa Kamal Dahal won a confidence motion yesterday with 172 votes out of 275. Okay, what number of votes did he need to actually win that confidence vote? Do you do you know or could you let me know? It's 138 votes, so he got about okay. 32 more votes. Thanks a lot. Yeah. In Pakistan, uh, the government is continuing to brand Imran Khan and his party as a militant group. Khan is meanwhile claiming that uh, unknown individuals tried to kill him recently when he attended a court summons in Islamabad. Uh, we're also creating an assessment on Pakistan and the security environment there to be released tomorrow. Yeah, great. Thanks. And I know that we've already given um, clients a bit of a heads up on, on that. By the way, I sent out a letter on Monday. Thank, thanks very much. In Sri Lanka, the International Monetary Fund approved the US dollar 2.9 billion bailout package. Sri Lanka will receive over 300 million US dollars in two weeks, and the rest of the funds will be dispersed over the coming four years. The president also said that he's seeking a 10 year debt moratorium. Uh, this is as external debt stand at around USD 46 billion. Yeah, look, it's really interesting just to see and hear of all these numbers and the use of these terms, I for international, W for world, when actually it's all um, US um, will. It's very interesting if you've have had a chance to read our the pragmatic assessment we, we released yesterday. Mike Mangan's obviously a very skilled and, and renowned analyst, and he breaks down the US debt and how there's a, a real mask mirror that betrays financial solidity when in fact it's um, got a system that's backed by wonderful words of stability and sureness, but it's actually running on bankruptcy levels. And at some point, the pack of cards is going to come down. In interestingly, the other major analyst we have that we don't declare who that is, but he's even more pessimistic on this the weaknesses that are being masked as strengths in the Western economic systems. And obviously Credit Suisse is a classic and you know, the 40th biggest bank, the 20th biggest investment bank 
and had to be propped up and bought out to save face. And the whole American banking system's tinkering on failure. So quick thing for all our clients, uh, buy gold. Move, move on, please. Right. Uh, Paul, in Europe, Russian President Vladimir Putin and Chinese President Xi Jinping yet met, met yesterday. Uh, they will continue official meetings today. China has denounced the International Criminal Court's warrant on Russian President uh, Vladimir Putin, saying that it reflected double standards. Meanwhile... Okay, the, yep. Go ahead. Uh, well, the U.S. also pledged another $350 million of military support for Ukraine, while the European Union has agreed to send... Uh, 1,155,000 meter caliber artillery rounds to Ukraine at a cost of 2 billion euros over the next year. Okay, thanks. A Russian court also froze all Volkswagen assets in the country. This is as the German car maker has been trying to wind down operations over the last year. It's been trying to sell its Russian assets. Thank you. And in France, the government survived a no confidence motion yesterday by just nine votes, which is a much smaller margin than it had expected. This is over the passage of the controversial pension reform bill. Violent protests continue in the country and a major strike is planned on the 23rd of March, which we've already updated times about. 23rd, is it? Yes. Okay, thank you. Look, what, what's really interesting here is this just arbitrarily over not, not playing out a full parliament vote, changing the age of pension reform bills. All these issues are interconnected between the various central banks, the IMF, the World Bank. It's all about hegemonic power. Um, interestingly, the Chinese foreign minister came out. And if you haven't seen the video, it's very powerful, where he talks about the hegemonic power of America and going to Iraq on the basis that there were weapons of mass destruction getting caught out. So there are real shifts that are going to have monumental effect on the economy and monumental effect on the security paradigm. Obviously, what happened in Iraq ultimately um, commenced great instabilities from outside forces deploying in there. Um, I'd love to think it was all about security, but having been on the operational headquarters of the Australian military myself, I know the machinations of even when I was an operations officer, um, it was 98% uh, controlled by politicians wanting to do things for reasons that had no linkage to security, even though perhaps they believed it was all about long-term security. The reality is most people don't like to hear the realities that we discuss each day. Um, but the security paradigms of reality are really what's going to drive the future, not mandated media plugging a line and eloquent talks about all this money getting pledged like it comes from just magical gets printed like it's got the value of monopoly paper. So I, I fear that you can only um, wave very large hands on very little small maps before at some point the reality strikes home to what America's doing to try to maintain an appearance of keeping control and worse, pretending that it's all about um, the good of the world. All right, thanks very much. Well, that's a brief for today. Anything else you need? No, excellent. Cheers.